You have been alienated. If you've been feeling down lately, dingy, pessimistic about the future and ready to just give up, it's not surprising. You're alienated. Ironically, you're not alone in your alienation. I'm alienated too. Most of us in the real world are. What do I mean by alienation? Simply that you have been disconnected, separated from the things that are important in your life in a variety of contexts. For a small example, take food. Unless you live on a farm, you are likely alienated from the people and places that feed you. The meat in that burger you're eating, where did it come from? The lettuce in your salad, that tomato, that banana, that coriander, that salt, that sugar, that bottled water, that tea. Who packaged them for you? Who cut their knuckles harvesting it? Who slaved in the sweltering sun to produce it? Likewise, you have been alienated from the true cost of what you eat. What should a head of lettuce cost? What should a steak cost? Were the farmers and pickers paid a living wage for it? Was the plant or the animal cared for before it died for you? Is the land being properly rested so it can continue to produce? When you pay $3 for a pack of noodles, does that price reflect the labor it took to make them? Here's the thing, you have no say over any of that. You could try to vote with your dollars, but which affordable brand at your local grocery store isn't exploiting the supply chain? How would you know? You're not meant to know. You've been alienated. Speaking of money, You've been alienated from yours. Your money goes to a bank via direct deposit, probably. Or else, you hand a white rectangle to a bank teller to make the numbers on the computer go up. And you probably go shopping by showing a plastic rectangle to a cashier who lets you leave with your food. When you can't afford something, you borrow it from a bank who gives you a different plastic rectangle to show. Everything is abstracted away to make your consumption more seamless. At any given moment, are you aware of how much money you have access to? How much you need? And how much you're actually getting from your labor? Uh-oh, I mentioned labor. You know you're alienated from the fruits of your labor, right? With few exceptions, most of us are not paid the full value of our labor. Think about it. You're most likely paid a market rate for your time if you spend your hours writing code, answering phones, stacking boxes, or running reports. You're paid the same no matter how successful your company becomes. Yet, the bosses are pocketing more than you. Do they work harder than you? Do they produce more? Do they sweat more? Do they bleed more? Do they cry more than you? So where does their higher salary come from? Well, not to get too reductive, but typically a business takes materials, combines them with labor, and then sells the output. The difference between the sale price and the cost of materials plus labor is called profit, meaning your labor imparts surplus value to materials that someone else is keeping. A bunch of customer service reps, stock pickers, and IT nerds made less than $100,000 a year, while Jeff Bezos went on to amass a fortune that no one could spend in a lifetime. 
Not only that, but you pay your taxes year after year, and yet, when, say, a pandemic hits, and you need unemployment assistance for longer, rich politicians and so-called job creators call you lazy and unmotivated for needing some of your money back. It's your money, and they make you feel bad for spending it to feed your family. Why? Because your labor pays for their summer home. So how did this all happen? Well, you've been alienated from politics too. Rich men like Bezos own newspapers and contribute to advertising campaigns for politicians. And the politicians want to stay in power. So when you and Jeff Bezos disagree on policy, who are they going to listen to? You? But what if what's good for Jeff Bezos harms one million of your closest friends? Doesn't that change things? Well, let me hit you with this. Are you and one million of your closest friends in total solidarity with each other? Do you act as one political unit? Or do you squabble? Are you sometimes suspicious of the others? Did someone tell you that the poor friends, the immigrant friends, the friends with the weird religion, the friends who transitioned to another gender, that those friends are actually harming you? If someone told you that, what if I told you that it was the rich guys harming all of you who happen to own the newspapers and the ad campaigns and the video streaming services that are telling you that? You have been alienated from your community. Sure, maybe you say hi to your neighbor, watch their kids every once in a while. But what about the couple struggling with bankruptcy? The family shattered by addiction? What about the guy all alone around the corner in the apartment complex who is... Desperate. This is the important part. You have been alienated from the people who need the same things that you need. If you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't work, you don't get health insurance in the United States. And yet, you've been alienated from other people who are hungry, who are sick, who are afraid for their future. Do you ever ask why? Why am I angry with someone who has the same needs as me? Why am I obsessing over refugees and addicts and sex workers and ex-cons? If you remember nothing else, remember this. You are probably six bad months away from being homeless, but you are not six good months away from being a billionaire. If you are not Jeff Bezos or his 1,000 closest friends, you have more in common with someone living in a shack in the woods than you do with old Jeff. You have been alienated, not because you're stupid, not because you're evil. You have been alienated because alienating you makes people you will never meet rich and comfortable and powerful. You have been alienated by people that produce TV shows, own newspapers, write laws, and run corporations. You are alienated because they need you alienated. Because millions of alienated people won't demand better from their masters. You're alienated because it makes you docile, easy to control, compliant, Quiet. 
So what do? There's only one answer. Unalienate yourself. Organize. Share your salary. Share your food. Buy local. Give to a local charity. Volunteer with a local outreach. Protest local injustices and pay bail for protesters. Vote in city council elections and midterms. And I guess the general for all the good that does. But most importantly, build relationships with the people who need the same things as you. Share your needs with one another without shame. And then link arms and refuse to back down until you get fed, clothed, housed, treated, and dignified. The people with the mansions and yachts need you alienated. When you ally with your fellow worker, it threatens their luxury watches and their champagne and their spa retreats. When you put aside your fears of Muslims, of sex workers, of refugees, of prisoners, of welfare recipients, of the disabled, of the discarded, it threatens your master's ability to live in ludicrous comfort at your expense. You have more in common with society's cast-offs than with society's elites, and the elites spend billions of dollars a year convincing you of the opposite. Remember, remember, remember. You are six bad months away from homeless. You are not six good months away from elite status. Find your community of vulnerability. Find the people who need what you need. Find the people who struggle like you struggle. Organize, come together, and demand better. Slap the champagne out of the hands of these pampered fucks who have been alienating you from your people. Show them what you and a million of your closest friends are capable of.